the idea that the mats don't lie. You understand? You understand? Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, a martial art that has only been around for a hundred years. It rivals big names like Karate and Taekwondo. Before we can talk about it now, we must first reach into the past. So come with me for just a moment while we talk about BJJ and its effect on history and changing lifestyles around the world. Well, the, the misunderstanding comes where people think that they can see something one time or they can see something done on a movie, in a movie or on a television or on a video on TikTok or whatever and think they, they can do that same kind of thing. Um, what I encourage people to, to understand is, is training is essential if you, want to be, um, if you want to be competent in being able to take care of yourself, to defend yourself and those close to you. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu as a whole founded a statement and a mentality within the fighting and MMA community. This rise in popularity caused people to learn self-defense. That is proven to work on the streets. Officers, office workers, and students alike use BJJ to help defend themselves. I think inherently Jiu-Jitsu is going to build your self-confidence. Deal with difficult circumstances, whether they're physical or otherwise. History is often hard to trust since we weren't there to see it be made. So most things are uncertain, just like the origins of jiu-jitsu. One theory starts all the way back to Greece, with Alexander the Great and his conquests in 356 to 323 BC, when he traveled to what is now known as India, and introduced Greek customs and ideals to the people of that area where jiu-jitsu most likely founded. Now that we are done with the wondrous theories, let's talk about what we do know the facts of Gracie Carlos and Helio Carlos. One of the most common consensus of history goes to say that the Gracie brothers founded the basis of modern BJJ, mixing other martial arts and turning them into something new. Carlos Gracie and his brother went to Japan in the early 1900s and learned from a Japanese practitioner of Aikido named Mitsui Maida. The first official school was founded in 1930 and started out basic with its popularity growing in the U.S. with the UFC and other types of martial arts schools discovering a gentle art. Someone comes against someone who's trained and versus someone who's not been, had any real training, there's a significant difference. And I've trained a lot of people over the years that, that thought they knew how to fight because they would get into an altercation on the street or whatever and do well, and they come in there with, with experienced fighters that are trained and they find very quickly that they didn't know quite as much as they thought they did. So they, it's a confidence thing, and it's just a, it's an understanding of, of the art of jiu-jitsu, and it is an art. Mitsuye Maida introduced Carlos to jiu-jitsu at the age of 14. He became an avid student for a few years. The studies under Maida had a profound impact on his mind. He never before sensed the level of self-control and self-confidence. Since jiu-jitsu is all about, um, again, self-awareness, it's about self-confidence, and it's about treating people with respect, and um, that, that, that's applicable in any situation. I think that everyone should treat um, you know, their fellow human being with respect. At some point, they may try to choke you unconscious, and you have to be um, mentally and physically prepared for that. It come to a, a realization is that's as close to death as you can get without dying, is, uh, and I think that and overcoming that, that fear, A, went just to start, just to get through a, a, a training session and to go back. Um, I think that alone is going to build your self confidence. Generally, Jiu Jitsu, there's a saying the mats don't lie. So if you're a fraud, it, it's only a matter of time before it gets found out because you can't fake the funk. 